What we built is a bare bones tool for performing a literary reading that anyone can use that doesn't require cues or anything. I mean, we just press the button and, and it goes. Um, on the other hand, we've also sort of built uh, a version of an art installation that you can read to, and then it responds visually and dynamically. After dark, stars glisten like ice, and the distance they span hides something elemental. Not God, exactly. Even though I didn't know it, I was always obsessed with books. And obsessed with them holistically. I, I was obsessed with the design of them, <laughs> the, the art of them, having them around. This is <clears throat> like one of my favorite books as a kid when I was 11. Random book I found in a used bookstore. And so in the fourth grade, I like did a book report on it. It was super random. Late 18th century, Paradise Lost. It's like my favorite photography book. It's uh, all the US nuclear <laughs> tests. A copy of Ulysses sorted alphabetically. Fucking zombies. This is Lynn Ward who made novels without words. Yeah, there's all sorts of shit. So that definitely was sort of a big part of my life in my early life. So I was very interested in, in having books around. That's really the filter in which I like learned about art even later on. Like the first ways I really started to learn about art were all in the context of art books. And then I started skateboarding. Skateboarding was the injection point of like all subculture. I definitely had an extreme case of what I would call like skateboarder brain or skateboarder perception, where it just radically altered the way I looked at all physical structures. You know, walking, driving, whatever, you would see something and you would immediately be thinking, oh, how can that be used? I've always been attracted to uh, tr just the act of trying something that, that doesn't totally fit, but I was always interested in how you could visually animate a reading. So this one, as you say words, it responds to volume, but the more words you say, it spins the objects faster. And the faster. seeds of this project are really in, I, you end up sitting in a lot of readings and, um, and doing my own readings for my book. I was always, I was experimenting and not all the experiments worked. I mean, I tried like collaborations with musicians and reading aloud. I tried all, all sorts of things. The idea was pretty broad, which it was just a general like, figure out in what ways this was possible. Not only finding the databases and, and settling on the, the color database, but um, for me, taking that and being like, I'm gonna do that literally as a design. You know, I'm not gonna waste my time with any other or whatever. I'm going to create a design around the idea that like words have color. Well, I told you I'd write it into something. I'm in the junk shop of my 30s. A weird thing happens when you enter. Nothing. You look up. From the beginning, I was just really focused on not just the tool building, but more importantly, like building something with the intention of it being a collaborative platform. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What sort of vibe do you want? Um, okay, so this is like a, a it's a shit play, let's say. Okay. So chaos and maybe like, I'm really into the like sort of like uh, green. I wanted it to be a state of play. It's why, for example, we'd gone through all there were and then I was just like sort of talking across the room to the readers asking what they wanted. <laughs> because I, I, you know, the idea of playing with it um, was important and when I have seen things like this truly be additive, there's that sense of someone very talented in a different thing is engaged in this creative duet with this thing. And maybe it's raining a little, and so my afro is soggy when I return to you and rinse my hands in the busted bathroom sink, and I look at you and think it is such a good thing to pick your own life. A lot of it for me is about like trying to take two groups of people and like smashing their heads together. <laughs> it's something Culture Hub does a, 
actually a great job of building a, a functional community of like connecting people you never would have met otherwise, where you're the pivot point of that network. That's the real test of communities. I want technologists to start tackling stuff that involves literary work and storytelling in a little different way than they necessarily are. And I want writers and poets and editors and literary people to start interacting with technology and technologists in a way they aren't necessarily doing. At the moment, I don't think I identify as an artist. None of the work I'm doing here and hopefully in spaces like this, I feel like ownership of. I definitely feel much more sort of like I'm building a space for collaboration or building the back end of a project that then artists can use or other sorts of people can use. You know, I, I still, I feel like a writer. I do definitely feel like a patron and facilitator and supporter of the arts. Identifying as that is very important to me. I think it's very easy as a creative to be told or pressured to go it alone. And that uh, that's not a bad thing to resist. Um, and I say that as someone whose primary field, you actually do have to go alone, like literally <laughs> go it alone. So um, I think anytime you can break out of that, it's great.